This video will be about the Real Link video doorbell they have. Their uh, video doorbell came out a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago. I focus my um, reviews and testing with compatibility with third party uh, devices and uh, recorders. I usually focus on Synology Surveillance Station. Um, they sent the first ones out October, mid October of 2022, is when the review beta test came out. I think they sent a few out to customers as well. Your experience should probably be different than what I'm doing here because this is still the first few weeks after launch here. So there's going to be some firmware updates. Some things should be easier for other people as uh, we submit our reviews and experience and trials. Um, so it once you know, customer models start getting shipped out months from now, some of the bugs will be worked out and it'll be a lot easier, but I'm going to just kind of walk you through how to set it up and how to link it to a third party recording device that people want. This is a lot, um, I think more secure and private and a better quality of camera than what we, the community has been used to the last five years with things like Ringer Nest where those doorbells are very popular. There's probably 20 on my street. Probably every fourth house has a Ring or Nest doorbell, but they're paying a monthly subscription fee they have to pay, and their videos are being stored on the Google or Amazon or Microsoft servers, and those are your private video files being stored on a corporate server that you might not have read the fine print, understood the fine print of what all they can or can't do with your personal data that they're recording. You might have more than just a doorbell. You might have like a few interior cameras or exterior cameras and they can just watch you, uh, play, your kids play in the backyard or do barbecuing or if you have interior cameras, uh, all your cameras with those companies go to their server. They're not locally stored. While with the the actual real link NVR that they have that is on your real link hard drive in your machine on in your home and what I use is Synology NAS with their surveillance station program and that is stored in my home on my network it does not go to any company if you hear any noises or things it's going to be some of the audio for some of my cameras outside you probably just heard that truck drive by possibly so we're going to add a device um, it's usually easier in the app I find on my phone it, to just because real link on their box or on the camera there's usually a QR code for you to scan with the camera and you can scan that and quickly very quickly add it to your to your um, your app on your phone or into your home network but since I'm doing the video here I'm gonna do it through the uh, the desktop client here where you can control all your camera settings so this is what would pop up if I were to scan the QR code on my camera. And it's going to ask, is it plugged in? Yes, it's plugged in. And it's going to look for it. And now it wants me to start setting it up here. So after it finds it, you can type in your password that you want to create for your device to see how it's going to be. I'm not going to tell you what my passwords are. So you create your password. Starts creating device. This is the same thing in your phone app. You'd have to do a password twice. Then you have to name your uh, your camera. So we got a password. We have a name. It wants to know. There's a um, chime dongle that comes with this you plug in the wall anywhere it doesn't use the uh, old chime or you don't have to have a chime for the store it comes with one it has 10 different ringtones um, I'm not gonna link it because it really doesn't matter to for you to see me link it to the the door chime to show um, third-party compatibility right now so I'm just gonna skip that for now um, what I have this one Yes, it's already, I don't need instructions how to connect it. Yes, it's done. Yes, it's done. Oh, it's already there. I don't need the, okay. So I'm going to close the instructions. I already did this, right? You can already see it's already here. So once your camera's here, you got your, these are all your cameras you'll have. Click the little gear here. 
And to make this work with third party, you want to go to network. And you want to do setup. And you want to make sure you have a static IP address so you can link to it. So that's done. And then with advanced, you want to do port settings. And you have to enable RTSP or whatever port you're using. The way Reolink has their security now, most of the ports are closed for your privacy and your protection. You have to open the port you need to use to link it to a third party um, recorder, which is actually a good idea. You don't just need everything open for everybody to view. So I just open the port I need for Synology Surveillance Station. So that's now done. I can close that and then we will go to Synology. There is the Surveillance Station web interface and there is the Synology um, desktop client. The web interface I think is better for setting up the cameras because you're it depends on how you set up the accounts because um, there's different um, admins and users. I don't like to use my admin account for security reasons very often because I don't need to I just don't need to have admin control of the uh, device that often. It's, it's best if you don't use your admin control very often because that way people can't log in and do things that they shouldn't be doing. So go to IP cam at the top here, open a new tab, and you want to add a camera. It's not going to be on the drop down menu, I don't believe, for um, Synology. So you can't just do a drop down menu and type it in, but you can easily type in the values and make it work here. It, the Reolink doorbell also has an SD card, so if you just want to record to an SD card and view it off your SD card, and not hook it to the internet, not mess with a hard drive or a NVR in your house. SD card works just fine. There's no issues with any of those. So I have my, uh, I already found the, the doorbell I want to use. It pops up just like any other network camera because it pretty much is just a five megapixel network camera that has doorbell functionality with it. So we'll grab that name. I don't like the name. Call it a doorbell. We're going to click authenticate here at the top because we need to tell it our admin username. Let me spell correctly here. And our admin password. What port we're on. Authenticate. And we should get some pop-ups here about camera licenses. I don't know if everyone knows. Um, Synology uses a camera license to fund the software and keep everything updated and uh, um, running. It's $50 per additional camera. They give you two free trial cameras. Then you can purchase additional ones, and it does um, fund them to make sure the software is up to date and better than just your uh, basic NVR that comes with camera kits or from Costco or Sam's. So we have our camera set up here with our name. Hit next to the bottom. Quick setup's fine. I don't need to do anything special with it. And here it is telling me that it is going to use a camera license. So basically I agree to use one of the $50 camera licenses that I own to link it to the Synology. So done. It's going to load here. So now we're going to wait for it to load and activate. It's activating. There it is. So once it is loaded, um, you can click it to edit things. See, it's an OnVIF. In the future, it will be added and you can scroll down and it'll be in the drop down menu so you can click real link yes, okay. and find your video doorbell but there are still some cameras that aren't added here yet so 
but it'll be an easy drop down menu to pick once it is added but it doesn't need to be done that way just yet in video you can change um, yeah it's not 720p let's crank the settings up here it is a 5 megapixel camera at 30 frames per second so we're gonna crank up the resolution here on recording here you can do scheduled recording um, dual recording is edge recording where if you have an SD card and the network drops out and when the network does come back up it will fill in blank timelines from the SD card on the camera that's pretty nice here I usually do 24 hours with 30 day retention for my own home but I really don't need to do that while I'm just testing the camera so I'll just store I don't know 200 gigs of footage is probably good enough one thing I do like to do is I will do a force restart after a minute if it loses connection with the camera so if Synology loses connection with the camera it'll go hmm maybe a restart will help fix this it'll force a restart if it loses connection and that's really all there is I mean it's already recording so we will close this there's monitor center here um, I don't use it in the um, web interface because um, Chrome and all the other web browsers don't have H.265 compatibility so this isn't an H.265 camera but I have 4k cameras and I just it's just a pain to man, here I'll show you open it and it's like can't show cameras and you're like great that was a waste of time but we can so we have an unknown so we'll close that we can set up our layout so we'll just drop our where's our we'll just drop the doorbell right there and we'll be fine this year yep save okay we will open this is now the Synology surveillance station desktop client and here I mean because it's not an admin login I'm not allowed to edit these cameras so I couldn't add it here just the way I have it set up for security that's why I did it in the admin there briefly but now that I'm here to check cameras and review footage and things I don't do that with admin privileges just for my security so I can go to monitor center and here we can see all of our cameras here laid out so here is and I can go back in time and I can make the camera go fast I can click live and this is a little bit blurry um, sorry I took it apart so I'll probably do a disassembly video too in the future to show what the cameras like on the inside it's um, material quality it's uh, manufacturing quality so durability quality testing but when I put it back together it wasn't I mean about 10 15 feet out it's good but for a regular 5 megapixel camera this should all be clear other testers have a great image here so it's just something that I did when I took it apart and put it back together there is some um, distortion on the edges as it's trying to show as much footage as it can um, you show one of the oops, didn't mean to close the whole thing when you get a regular 5 megapixel camera you don't have that blurring on the edges as it tries to fisheye more um, footage into the sensors it can later down the line I'll, I'll put the doorbell here on the house or the garage and I'll test what is the different overlap and um, coverage areas of my 520 5 megapixel camera here mounted above my door compared to a doorbell that would be mounted right there next to the door handle and what what do they compare because I've been happy with this camera so I'm curious how the doorbell compares to this one I'll just have to move it and start to draw out the different areas of coverage and see where each camera can cover and what it can't cover that'll be interesting to see 
So this has been a little review here of the Reolink video doorbell. So there's my review. You guys have a good day.